Buenos días, good morning, hello everybody, ¿qué tal? Uh, voy a hacer un video bilingüe, I'm going to make a bilingual uh, video on the topic of individualism and how um, the individualist mentality philosophies uh, based on individualism that have that have been that started sometime around around the uh, the time Ayn Rand and other people I read a little bit about this but I can't name drop right now I know that it's sometime back then where uh, ideas of self-expression and the importance of uh, freedom of self-expression and so forth started taking ground uh, started growing and affecting society um, el individualismo que más o menos ocurre a, a la, a la misma, en, la, en la misma época eh, de Ayn Rand y otra gente que estaban hablando de los derechos del individuo y de eh, la importancia de la, de la expresión propia individual eh, que más o menos empezó, no, ni siquiera me acuerdo en este momento estaba eh, pensando esto en la cama, no pude dormir because my, I couldn't get any sleep because my tinnitus just picks up, picked up in the middle of the night and I don't know what's going on, I'm having all sorts of pains and all over my body but when I try to go to bed, it's weird cuando me acuesto me volvió la tinnitus y no podía dormir y me daba, me daba estoy teniendo dolores en todo el cuerpo y me daba vueltas en la cabeza esto que dije bueno lo voy a grabar lo voy a registrar para que por lo menos quede eh, grabado no Arqu arquiviado digamos I'm gonna record it so at least I you know so anyways this is uh, the idea the basic idea is that individualism uh, the individualist movement let's call it has steadily been expanding into our other areas of society and creating ideologies that have steadily resulted in separating society but ultimately the the most impactful or devastating effect of um, of individualism is that it lowers and it disintegrates social intelligence general common social wisdom that the kind of knowledge about the species that we share generationally that we pass down between parents and between our friends that understands the species that knows what what affects human beings self-knowledge of of the species is broken down is is it starts we start becoming more ignorant basically um, and I'll explain why, but first I'll say that in Spanish. Uh, la idea básicamente que quiero conferir es que eh, las ideas de individualismo, las filosofías de individualismo que dieron lugar a un montón de ideologías que fueron creciendo a través de las décadas, el, el efecto devastante que tienen es que van eh, destruyendo la, la, la sabiduría, la inteligencia social con respecto a nosotros mismos como especie, o sea que nos va poniendo más tontos en otras palabras, nos eh, vamos perdiendo sabiduría, eh, aquella sabiduría que se pasa como inteligencia social de generación en generación con respecto a la especie, con respecto a cómo somos, cómo, cómo es el ser humano. Y para que se entienda por qué, es lo que voy a explicar ahora. So, basically, the human being... Um, the human being is a collective species. Our understanding, our form, is that of uh, uh, a um, co community collective uh, form of life. Uh, that's our first description. Um, so therefore, if you're going to understand a human being, an individual, you have to understand social collective dynamics 
because the collective and the social environment and the communities in large and small scales are what create our knowledge and understanding about ourselves, about each one of us. Um, la especie humana, la definición, la descripción del ser humano, comienza parte del, de la colectividad, o sea, las, 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 las comprensiones comunales, colectivas eh, de la especie. Nosotros somos y nos podemos describir como individuos gracias a la comprensión del ser humano, de la especie, que es eh, comprendido a través de sus dinámicas colectivas y sociales. Somos el resultado de lo que nos educa el mundo y lo que se comunican todos los individuos en, en, su, en su sentido total colectivamente a comprender con respecto a la especie y por lo tanto cada uno de nosotros bien, termina conociendo al individuo, o sea al ser humano, a la especie a través de, de, de comprender cómo funcionan las dinámicas de manera colectiva y esa resulta ser la verdad más acertadora, o sea, más, mejor, que mejor describe el por qué un ser humano hace lo que hace o se desarrolla de la manera que se desarrolla. Es gracias a comprender todas eh, las dinámicas que han influenciado la inteligencia, el desarrollo de los individuos y, la, y la, de la educación, del conocimiento, de las, de, las ciencias con, de las ciencias humanas con respecto al ser humano. So, all that we are... Uh, all that we become and everything that we understand about individuals is thanks to the fact that we have collectively shared information based on understanding the dynamics of the social species of the human being. Uh, and so anything that we will affirm about uh, in, in human sciences, about understanding uh, people or society, will have come from... Um, from um, from understanding those dynamics that happen collectively. In other words, um, if you um, have to know how to raise a child, for example, and what principles and values need to be applied to raising a child. Por ejemplo, eh, si vamos a hablar de criar un niño y cuáles son los principios y... Eh, la, los, los principios y los valores que tienen que ser aplicados en, en la crianza de los niños. You're going, to, you're, you're going to be a wise and understanding and more complete, uh, more completely educated or informed and knowledgeable parent if you know how kids interact um, with one another, if you know how, if you understand the relationship between the child and its parents, what kids will do behind your back with, when they need to grow up with their own peers and, and those are the things that will shape them socially and you know what people do anyways regardless of what you specifically and directly try to teach your own child. The wise parent is the one that knows how kids are and that means knowing what kids do outside the environment of, of the parental uh, guidance. Um, that is the larger understanding of a parent. It's, it, it's the parent that understands the child in the context of uh, the, the collective human species and, and what children, as different to adults, will be like among each other and in, from their perspective towards parents. Um, it's not that we have forgotten entirely. Uh, okay, I'm not going to start comparing. Eh, por lo tanto, por ejemplo, un padre es un mejor padre cuando entiende cuando, eh, lo, cómo son los niños entre sus propios amiguitos, o sea, cómo se comportan detrás, de, más allá de las instrucciones precisas y directas que existen entre, o las, las guianzas que existen entre los padres y, eso, y sus niños entiende cuáles son las dinámicas eh, cuando juegan y lo que se buscan entre ellos y lo que, lo que se hacen los niños entre ellos eh, colectivamente. Ese va a ser el mejor padre, el que sabe educarlo también a cómo llevarse, cómo relacionarse con los otros niños. Por ejemplo, el padre que educa, que enseña a su hijo cómo llevarse con sus 
uh, peers, as little buddies in school, how to deal with situations that happen among them. En este, en, este, en, este, en este este ejemplo es el que quizás menos desintegrado ha sido y eso tiene sentido últimamente porque seguramente que lo último que la, natural, la evolución y la naturaleza va a permitir que se degrade es la, son las áreas de proliferación donde menos capaces somos de penetrar, por ejemplo, en otros lugares que sí hemos penetrado. Okay. So, um, Let's take, for example, uh, the area of sexuality and homosexuality. For example, in the zona de sexualidad y homosexualidad. Um, in the, in, in, we have always, and it seems that we have forgotten now, and we have uh, archived uh, to be forgotten and to be shunned all the, all the material and all the intelligence in psychology and narrations and stories Um, that we have that have demonstrated we have always understood the social context of homosexuality we have always and, and, and homosexual development um, we have always known intuitively that there was a, a, a strong factor that had to do with uh, the raising of the child and how uh, others and spe specifically parents interacted even before the field of psychology um, appeared in human sciences. We already kind of understood that the parents' uh, treatment of the child potentially, we you know, was going to result in a whole bunch of things. And one of those things was its own sexual perception of itself and its sexuality and therefore homosexuality. Well, now, as we know, that has been uh, banned. We cannot, we cannot include Uh, medically, in a medical capacity, homosexuality anymore because we have made it a civil right of individual expression and we have politicized it and da da da, da. And so that goes against, and so the whole, the whole idea that I'm trying to explain is that individualism uh, opposes collectivism. Collectivism being the, the field of, in which we are more able to um, accurately describe the species and therefore the individuals of the species uh, and it's you know mental intelligence uh, it's you know reasoning it's thinking it's natural reasoning it's it's way for it's 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 the manners in which it, it thinks uh, and the things that it needs uh, to have a, a, a healthy social fulfillment Um, individualism destroys that because that, that it destroys something this that will come to us naturally we will naturally educate ourselves socially to understand ourselves I can't do this bilingually no lo puedo ser bilingüe es, es, es demasiado difícil uh, because we will um, we will um, learn from society and from the collective we will pass along everything that is pertinent to the human species. And so, so we naturally develop social wisdom and intelligence. We naturally learn through our older peers what a pe person, people will do in, in whatever si given situations. Um, what individualism does is it starts uh, instructing us to think of human behavior as ideological in, in principle and morale and so you start saying well you should do this because this principle or this uh, uh, morality ideology which comes from individualist thought says that you're a better person or you're a correct person or you're politically um, appropriate person or you're a socially uh, deserving person If you think this way, if you do this or you do that, and these all these ideas all come from the individualist movement, and what the, and and because it opposes the collective social intelligence uh, that come, that is educated naturally, infuses into the the, the growth of society, the oncoming uh, the oncoming oncoming of new generations. We're constantly infusing wisdom and knowledge information, if you want to call it that, 
about the species through the plur plurality of society. We, it's something that is always brewing. It's always happening with us. But individualist philosophy came and uh, started attacking that and, and saying, because it started picking on things that it was bothered by, injustices or things that seemed wrong. And it started building a, a, a mentality of instructions and there and then came the 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 development of um, individualist philosophy i'm not a scholar as you can tell so it's hard for me i can't really start specifying things uh, but people who are educated and are listening to this will know uh, who are educated in this uh, who have written these books that i have read or articles that i have read <laughs> Uh, will know um, what I'm talking about. Um, for example, let, let me let me throw another example out there. Um, there was a time, I, I, you know, this whole thing started because I was in bed, and sometimes I conceive, um, I conceive of uh, um, uh, titles that should be book titles. <laughs> um, and wait, I just realized I'm going to run out of battery, so I'm going to wait, do this. Um, and it was uh, the bird feather, no, the cage, the feather, the okay, cage, okay, the bird cage. The bird cage is no longer funny. I turned on my computer because I thought it needed its power, but I, I put it in on the wall instead. Um, the bird cage is no longer funny. Um, and I thought that would have been an interesting title because um, the birdcage, the story, the French movie and, and the American movie with Robin Williams um, and, and the other actor, uh, who I forget his name, um, made fun of uh, basically cross-dressing, right? Um, and it comes from the momentum of a time in which uh, you know, maybe at a college party or what have you, we considered it funny that guys would dress up as women. Why did we consider it funny? Uh, well, because it, the, the absurdity of the mistake, that's what we thought was funny. Behind the laughs, what we were actually finding funny is that we would get it wrong <laughs> and look at what a guy looks like with high heels. And that was what was funny. Uh, but as we developed, uh, and, and uh, well, now the sort of gay culture has taken trans, uh, cross-dressing into more of a self-expression of, of liberation. Look at just how extreme I can be. And they, they find that entertaining, not so much funny, but fabulously entertaining. It's different to where it originated, you know, like, uh, like in army camps, you know, when the soldiers would parade around with uh, dressed as women, and they thought that it, the 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 substance of the humor there was that we would get it wrong, right? But as we've uh, transformed our uh, ideas uh, regarding homosexuality, interest, trans dressing, uh, cross dressing, and so forth, uh, driven by ideological civil rights and all this stuff that now it's become a serious thing, you know, and you've got to make a choice, uh, you know, what if you're gay or not gay and all this, the birdcage is becoming less funny. And there, there's a whole new thing about, um, I forget the name, correct? Uh, where we basically we're censoring each other from everything is wrong, right? I forgot what the name of this new thing, this new movement or... This, this new, uh, um, you know, where nobody can say anything anymore because everything you say is politically incorrect. Um, um, so it's very interesting, the, the opposition of individualism versus uh, collective, collectivism, let's just call it. Uh, because it's also reflected in the battle that um, capitalism and the right of people to 
to be private about their uh, aims and becoming rich and the whole privacy thing about stashing your money and you having the right to to uh, to sell to to market things in order to profit and it's it's all very individualistic right it's all very much about uh, don't touch me I have a right to be rich uh, and it it seems to hate the idea that where there's excess, it should be shared. If uh, there shouldn't be poor people, uh, we should know what what people make. Uh, you know, uh, salary should be public. What have what, what have you? Uh, and th this dichotomy, this opposition, is part of the human brain actually, because the human brain is a relationship between our social intelligence, meaning the knowing of of the understanding, the perception, uh, the, the thinking towards everything that is a plurality of life on the planet, the, the, the species that are beyond human beings, how collectives and how others will act of, of our own species, and the part of the uh, individual that must survive. Now, we have said in the past that the the instinct to survive is like the um the the we have ordered it as a priority as the most important thing is that ultimately we will kill somebody and we will prevail because the individual must survive and so we have ordered intellectually uh individualism uh ahead of collectivism in reality it's the other way around collectivism serves itself of the individual in order to survive itself the big species the species as a whole starts with all of us and it's, it's as if it had one voice that says i want right um and it serves itself of concentrating variance and multitude of individuals where uh, many will be sort of the, the leaders, the icebreakers, the, the, the trendsetters, or the, the necessary heroes, um, the ones, the first, uh, the first penguin that will jump off the, off the ice sheet, you know, for all the others <laughs> to come after it. Um, the purpose of the penguin jumping off first uh, it's not because he's mean and he will kill and he will wants to get the fish before any other fish do. Uh, it is so that the collective will jump in the water. And this dichotomy, this paradigm, is what human intellectualism has never very has never been very clear about. We have needed to order things linearly, and as such, uh, we have placed individualism in recent modern times first, and. As a consequence of doing that, we have been disintegrating our natural knowledge of truth, of things that, for example, another example is pregnancy. Pregnancy is the affair of both parents. <laughs> this has always been uh, common knowledge. This has always been sort of like the first thought that would come to anybody's mind. A woman's pregnant, where's a father or, you know, a pregnancy has to do with a man and a woman somewhere, right? And that has never been a question. That has always simply been known. Uh, how this, how the species uh, has handled the situation has had, yes, a, a form, you know, but it has never been a linear one behind the other form either, which is what we tend to do. It has always involved both. And, and the father was never far, and in time, in other times, it has been the father that that takes the you know like still in in Islam, the father takes the precedence. You know, it's it's almost like he's in charge of protecting that child above the mother. Um, you know, one could discuss, one could have personal views, but the point is that. Um, it has never only been the mother's property, <laughs> which is what we have come to by insist by by the forces that have uh, that individualism have propelled through feminism, through sexual rights, through you know 
um, affecting the way we have reasoned everything. For example, uh, feminism, why does feminism start? Well, because, uh, you know, we were becoming very intelligent and very um, proliferous and gregarious in our civilization, a bunch of inventions and doing stuff and wielding money and driving cars and da-da-da. All of a sudden there's new gadgets and instruments and and um, things to do in the house, you know, and all these new services, electricity, and, and we, it started becoming really obvious that the man was, uh, you know, where before it, perhaps, you know, a few hundred years before, it kind of fell into a more unnoticed place because it was so hard to live. And so, you know, just women going and collecting nuts and berries took up so much effort of the human, a total human effort, and a man going off to war and fighting the enemy <laughs> um, also took up so much of civilization's effort. We didn't really have a time to notice a, a contrast, many contrasts that were occurring, but modern civilization started making kind of obvious that men were just enjoying these inventions, and the little woman was being sent to the kitchen, you know, and... Uh, and our and ideas also in, in different fields were becoming more complex in philosophy and different intellectualities and started saying, hey, you know, women started speaking up and men, some men started acknowledging, yeah, I guess it's right. I guess you're right. I guess it's true, right? Now, what happened? Uh, instead of saying, instead of saying, always knowing that we were complementary as a, a, a collective notion, a basic collective fundamental notion of the species, that we are complementary and that, you know, not that we're, we're not different and we're uh, interestingly the same and capable of doing the same things, except for may, men having babies. Um, but basically, a, a woman can substitute a man in, in anything that you want to talk about, pretty much. Uh, finds it more challenging, more difficult, or perhaps in some instances less challenging or less difficult. But uh, basically there is an equality and at the same time there is an obvious, uh, there are obvious distinctions. There are things that immediately the man will do with great impetus, uh, you know, and the woman will wait, you know, or see what happens or or maybe learn, you know, she wants to learn how to do those things and, and learn to do it and become one of the few women that do that also. You know, but however you want to describe it, there are, there is definitely uh, this relative descriptions. When the feminist, when this happened in the, whenever, you know, when uh, the feminist movement started, started uh, appearing, um, we weren't clear about that because we weren't thinking collectively. It's always been challenging for human beings to put collectiveness first, as we, as we well know. <laughs> it's always been, you know, I, I have to go first. I have to go. So we have really done it this time. We have really put individualism there. But in the case of when, it's, when feminism started, instead of um, saying, well, you know, uh, women should be free to do whatever they want. If they want to vote, let them vote. If they want to learn how to drive a car, if they want to, you know. Uh, and so that would have been a liberation, a true liberation. Instead, what we started thinking was they have to do the same things men do. I mean, it wasn't so stark. You know, perhaps there was a lot of talk about letting women be or something. But in, it, if you look at the overall course, especially now, it seems that we have to have women in the police force. We must have women soldiers because we have um, we have forced this idea of symmetrical and thus artificial equality. And, and, and it's different to uh, liberating and discovering what the woman would have been without the man's uh, containment or control or selfishness or whatever you want to say. Uh, and seeing, well, what does she come up with, you know? Um, for example, we look at architecture. Before, uh, there weren't any women architects. Even when I started school, there weren't any, any women architects. And then see, immediately in recent times, we have people who are my, my age well, have witnessed this in our own lifetime. 
schools of architecture became full of women. Um, and, well, and, and nobody really was saying, you know, we should have more, like we say, we should have more women in the police force. You know, we should have a woman president, you know. It's not an idea that is was installed in the case of architecture. It just became a matter of freedom, opening the school to women too. And wouldn't you know that a whole bunch of women went to, they liked it. They liked architecture. They had their own ideas. And if you went to architecture school, it was fun seeing how women seem to have not such a rigid, I'm going to make a great structure, you know. No, it's more like, although Zara Hadid <laughs> does amazing structures, but I would note, especially in the first years of architecture school, you notice a, a more round about come at it, you know, with a lot of everything included, you know. Come, it's very interesting. Uh, and so as this should have been the feminist movement, the feminist movement should have just said, it's open. You sure you want to do that? You, you want to go put a gun and go kill, go into a storm with a SWAT team and maybe kill children because you storm into a house? You want that job? A woman probably would have said, mm, I don't know. You know, how about if I just, I, I, I advise um, and, 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 and teach men on what could be happening in the house before they storm in and, and kill everybody that's inside, you know? Uh, I would rather do that. But we never gave women that chance because it became in about installing a symmetrical idea. Um, so yeah, that's the example of feminism. With abortion, um, the same thing, you know. Abortion is about so much about not just the two parents, but it's also about the collective. I mean, uh, individualism has made us uh, deny and, and castrate ideas that continue to surface naturally, for example, uh, that, that describe the species and how the species and the social collective stays healthy and educating itself and continuing to do what the, the, the species learns to live like. Right. For example, when a woman is pregnant uh, in a neighborhood, especially if she's not busy getting in the car right away and going to work, <laughs> um, you know, and, and you know, in a, in a calm neighborhood, let's say, all the neighbors get happy, right? And they feel attracted to that baby, don't they? They feel like, oh, what's the dad doing? And you know, I'm I'm gonna be the, the first auntie, you know. And they all come and they try to have a special relationship with that baby when it's born. This is. This is the human species. <laughs> the baby was never about just the mother's right to her own body. Everybody else, stay away. No, but that's what individualism has done. Has done. It has inherited in, in, engendered one idea upon the other, which is all that social education is, is creating layers of based on what we believe last generation that these new ideas uh, have footings on which to validate and and build new ideas. And so before you know it, uh, getting the wrong ideas a few generations before will lead us to things that are completely off the natural evolution, evolutionary design. Um, and so, you know, we, we struggle with it, you know, we struggle with it and we attack each other uh, because we have to seem like, for example, the Russians... Um, bundled their babe. I don't know if they still do it, but I saw this documentary once, which I thought was, it kind of struck me a little bit. When the baby's born, they bundle it really tight um, for a while, I don't know for how long, um, before they give it to the parents or something. And they were explaining in this documentary that, um, um, that this is good actually for the baby because it is already in a very contained, environment and it helps. maybe it's a little bit excessive i don't know but it's not the wrong idea apparently and what do we do we were putting them in incubators you know and the parents could look from behind in other gl room glass you know and we have we tend to be so destructive to the natural uh needs of of how how the species is because we're so brainy, we tell, instruct each other on how to think and what to do, all based on logics of things that maybe were 
you know, just a few generations before set down, like I just explained. But the idea of bacteria and contamination and all germs are bad, right? And so the baby needed to be isolated and put in a, in a plastic container. Um, and then we struggle with it because some people, eventually some people start saying, hey, isn't it wrong that a nine-year-old is asking its parents that it wants a transsexual operation? Uh, and finally, you know, somebody says, wait, something's not right here. And so we also learned that it's good to have for the baby to be close to the mother's breast right away. You know, maybe the Russians weren't so bad, weren't so off after all. Um, and so this is what in the, the fight and what we're seeing is this insistence on needing to confront uh, and in many cases, not so much in the United States, but for example, in Argentina, it's more obvious that it's a confrontation of the capitalist, selfish individual who believes in making money and letting everybody go off and make money with whoever they want. You know, forget the country, you know, forget the resources. It's all about bringing in those foreign investments. Um, the resources for the future of the country and its children. <laughs> um, and at the same, and on the other side, you have people that are still, they're not quite, they're not left, they're not um, socialists, you know, but they can come from justicialism, justicial, justicialism, it actually exists as a word, justicialism, I think it is. Um, and it is more of a social thing. In the States, uh, you know, more about people, country, the worker, right? The worker party, which is who's governing now. In the States, we have, we had that before, it seemed, more like that. You know, the Republicans all are about, you know, you drag your own weight and punish those who, who, well, maybe that's an exaggeration, but basically, if, if they're not, if they're not, being a contribution to society, they don't deserve to be with us, you know. Um, so it's a very kind of individualistic self, make yourself uh, and, and, and uh, let me be free and government non-intervention non and small government and so forth. Um, well, we, it seemed that the Democrats were more about, you know, let's look at where the people are suffering and, and you know, where, who's not, who's staying poor. And um, now it's weird. Now we have, it's almost like going like this, you know, they say they're Democrats, but in reality, they're doing all of this stuff that the Republicans were doing a few decades ago. Uh, and, and the Republicans... Um, say that they're nationalistic, but they permit things that are against the nation. And so it's kind of hard to figure out what's, what's uh, about nationalism, but they're really overlooking certain things that are... Uh, anyways, so it's very important that we, we, know, that we understand that all... The, the truest understanding and description of the species and therefore the individuals. There is no separation between the collective and the individual. It's a matter of ordering and not separating. Um, all truest and most best descriptive understanding of social, necessary healthy social dynamics and and the humans, the, how the, the, what the human being needs and family and society and and, and any, every form of collect, social, collective, civil expression um, is drawn, that the more truthful description is drawn from the evolutionary form that we were given over the vast majority of, of our de evolutionary development. In other words, if we have eaten almonds for, since we came down from the trees, and we continue eating, finding almonds on the ground, know, until the day we started writing and something happened that we started talking and writing. Um, and that constitutes of this human form, that constitutes 99% or whatever the figure is uh, of our evolutionary formation. 
meaning that this we haven't changed this last one percent since we started writing in caves. We're the same creature, the same human being. Uh, yet during those first ninety nine percent of the we have eaten almonds, it means that almonds today will be most befitting and therefore make us healthiest and be truest and more comfortable, most comfortable to um, our health, to our social health, to our thriving, uh, uh, establishing a thriving environment that will bring thriving to our species. <laughs> um, it's, it's a very simple concept. Uh, unfortunately, it seems that what we have done by creating an, an, an enemification by creating an opposite of everything that remotely sounds like social communist, God forbid, you know, philosophy or Marxist or what have you, by uh, for so many years, for a hundred years of constantly dr drilling into people that, you know, these are bad, look at all these dictator, communist dictators, look at what they've done and look at how many people Mao has killed and blah, 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 blah. We're not talking about the ideals what Marxism was trying to achieve, which as anything that's a better jump will be more difficult and therefore be riddled with more failure. <laughs> Everything that we try to do in, in, in towards jumping towards something more evolved or intelligent will all of a sudden bring with it a whole bunch of new mistakes, errors and failures and harms that we weren't experiencing before because we had gotten comfortable doing something at another level, at a more primitive level, right? And so the movements of, I know I diverted subjects here, but anyways, um, and, and because we made it, and for whatever happened is historically, I don't want to get into the details of it it, it, it was turned sort of like the feminist thing. Instead of looking at the substance, we, we became defensive because Marx, defined uh, the wrong way of doing it as capitalism. And so we just got all up in arms and said, oh, so we are the enemy, huh? No, we're going to make you the enemy now. And it just went the wrong way because what we should have done as a capitalist, whatever democratic world that we were in the West, I said, hey, look at how interesting what, there's, what they're talking about there in England and Germany and, and Russia, you know, they're trying to do something. They're trying to no longer concentrate power on a few and, and who are subject to human nature as far as, you know, insecurity and fear and selfishness and what have you, and, and create these problems. And, and we have always known throughout civilization, they're trying to solve that for the first time. And, you know, let's listen to what they're, instead of that happening, uh, it became a battle. And when something is a battle and, and, and people are instructed to view anything that sounds remotely like that as the enemy, we never give it a chance. We never give a chance for that sprout that happened a hundred years ago to flourish, to see where it goes, to see how maybe we can, we can actually do this. Um, and, um, nope. Where was the tension? Oh yeah, the evolutionary thing. And so when when we confront evolution, um, individualism versus collectivism, um, uh, we uh, n negate ourselves, you know, and, and make, especially now that we have sort of made a, 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 inferences of things that are about being sensitive to the collective, to social, to anything, it seems that it's it's bad. Because very subconsciously, we're thinking of it as non-individual pro-Marxism. We're not saying it that way, but you see people react. Whenever you s propose something that says, well, you know, let's make sure all the kids, well, with children, like I said, we don't seem to be so... Um, for example, let's make sure all the students get a grant and a loan and not just some students, not just the ones that got good grades or not just the ones that are poor. You know, let's just make sure that everybody is able to uh, have a comfort 
in, in, in covering the costs of their university studies. Immediately, that's not a bad idea, actually, because if you, if you, you know, a person who has money can do something else with that money, perhaps help others, or perhaps uh, start, you know, on something that will add to the nation, you know, will start his business sooner, or, uh, I don't know, um, is it a, a more social, socially conscious country, or is it a more, I'm going to buy myself the most expensive car possible now, uh, kind of society, I don't know, but the point is that um, we don't give ourselves room for uh, a positively collective reasoning on the matter, we immediately associate that idea of, of spreading uh, equality among all students and financing college, university, as something that sounds like what they would do in a socialist country. So people start saying, no, 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 before, uh, before anybody can explain, well, no, wait, this will do good in all these ways, it will do good. That never happens because we're so programmed to uh, to react, sensitive towards. The same thing happens with so many things, with the issue of guns, for example. You know. Oh boy, this could take forever. Um, you know, we don't, for example, I have this argument with people. Um, when I, I, I basically say the gun, the the weapon, the instrument is the, the 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 seed problem. It is the the causing agent. It is the problem itself. And immediately you get people who are like, no, it is people. You don't force people to kill somebody. They do it because they want to. And there will always be people who want to kill others. And there will always have war. And you know, and there's this whole. Boom, you know, this whole barrage that goes, why? Well, because the world has built up uh, based on certain ideological principles, ideas, and then they find that footing and they can sustain all these arguments. And when you finally have an intelligent comprehension of a truth that happens through understanding the psychology of the human being, for example, and it's and the psychology, the social psychology of human beings, and and the, and the evolution and the um, progression context. In other words, if we are a society that has always seen guns as something that can kill people and they're dangerous, they're bad, you should really, uh, you know kind of stay away from them or keep them in a place where only at, as a last resort you would ever resort to one, you know. If we had been that kind of society, um, whoop, I forgot the point I was going to make. It would never seem, it would never seem so outlandish to understand um, how we're affected socially and, and the social progressive, psychological Psycho, social psychology progression as a species. Uh, but because we have been a society that, you know, oh my God, the gun is everybody's right, and if you don't have a gun, somebody else will come into your house and kill everybody, and the Second Amendment, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and have been that society, dare you say that the gun is a problem, you will have an avalanche, a barrage of opposition, as we well know. And so, government doesn't really uh, have, you know, there used to be a time when the, because this is interesting, and, 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 and to, 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 to look at the, 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 the positive side of individual, the individual aspect of the brain. On the other hand, even though the purpose is for the collective and for the subsistence of the species, and like good little soldiers, the collective sends individuals to to capriciously cut forward for it. Therefore, the collective is always the, the purpose. It has been also, in the past, individuals 
some have been called dictators, but they weren't all dictators, and we still have great leaders who uh, who saw something that was ultimately true in social psychology and said, we're going to do this in this country. And swiftly, with the, the, the concentrated power of an individual in government, was able to all of a sudden radicalize and, and transform a country. It seems when you look at the gun situation in the United States, we can't do that. A lot of people kind of feeling that the gun is a problem, but you can't get past this mass of, of not just lobbies or, or what have you, or beliefs, but you know, it's, it's, it's like um, layers and layers of people believing structures of reasoning backed up by a, a world, or a country rather, of logic and things that, um, uh, that also believe a certain way or a structure a certain way. It's, so let's, let's pretend, let's pretend, which he isn't, but let's pretend that Biden was the kind of guy that says, hey, you know what, I don't believe, I, don't, I, I understand that. I think that eventually the human being socially will get used to guns and before you know it, more and more mass shooters and before you know it, we didn't see this before. Now we're seeing that perhaps we've got to do a big, huge change. We've got to put look at the Second Amendment again and see why it was created and when, for what reason, and question if we're even that, that need, we have that need anymore. It doesn't seem like we have that need anymore because the police will do whatever they, whatever they want with us anyways. And so it's, what are we going to do? Uh, let's say the police is acting for a, gover a governor and saying, a governor representing the state, right? And saying, we're not going to allow this, you know? We're not going to allow this. And they send a whole bunch of police. The police is the state. What are we going to do? Are you going to go grab a rifle and say, no, this is my city. You stay out of here. Uh, no, because they will just come in with, uh, what is it, the latest thing they had? Uh, uh, things they got, they bought from the military, uh, rampage things. They 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 tore, they bulldozed down a house to uh, a door to get into this one man who didn't want to come out of his house. They used a battering ramp. That's what it's called, you know. And so, Second Amendment. What the state? The state doesn't isn't it will has made clear that it will always be more powerful than the people. <laughs> isn't that obvious? Uh, so how is it how is it necessary? Oh, blah blah blah, blah but we continue and Marjorie Green and what Marjorie I think is the name. She's her name. She, blah, 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 she goes goes and you know. But really, when you analyze how things are actually working and what they are like today, you see that well, this isn't really applicable anymore. It doesn't make sense anymore. Nobody's doing that. And this fantasy uh, Biden that I was just uh, describing, would he try to, let's say that he was that person, we all know what he would be faced up against. Not a strong uh, individual that would oppose him, but a mass, you know, of, of, of people in Washington. Not even... 10 times larger than Congress, you know, who would just not always, always be, be, you know, saying something, saying something would be impossible. The United States has become a government, and, and many governments uh, are like this now, <laughs> that f find it incredibly difficult to seize the, the opening of a, a sudden truth, uh, a, a, a sudden correction, a very poignant, precise correction that would detect, oh my God, which happens, which is totally natural. It can happen. All of us, the whole mass of us, this whole sector, we're all going in the wrong direction. This was wrong. It needed to be over there. It did, this was wrong. That can happen. But many governments, the size of our government today is just unable to speak to the people and say, you know, we, we got to understand this. They did it with masks and, 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 and put telling everybody to wear masks in order to stop a virus. Great. Okay, good. Can, can we do that about, for example, realizing that we have a serious problem with our police? Psychological. 
It's a psychological problem that has to do with a mentality and education that they've been getting from society and from their training programs, building upon one generation and the other, one officer teaching the other, ending up in a way of looking at the citizenship a certain way. You can see it, if you can see it's a sociolo as psychological situation by how they approach a person. If you go to another country, you see police that walk on eggshells. They realize that they have guns and they're walking up to a citizen and they try to, they different cultures, they f f throw different, uh, express different forms of respect and containment and, and carefulness and in different ways. There's always that arrogance that comes from, from having the authority, whatever. It's also part of human nature. But in, in the case of, Hola, César, ¿qué tal? Um, in the case of uh, the States, you look at the way they they go at people. They, you know, it's almost like they're in the, in the far west. You know, they come like this. And then when they're subduing, and not only, it's also psychological. I was just watching something um, where they just, oh yeah, the guy that was mentally ill, and um, he was killed because they put him in a hog tie. Uh, and I was reading a, a, a story about how hog ties are used in a bunch of states. Todo bien? Sí, sí, sí. Estaba haciendo una disertación en, en bilingüe con respecto. Si quieres verla al principio, vas a ver de qué se trata. Y vi que era demasiado difícil. O sea que la estoy terminando con, eh, en inglés. Um, and when you see the way they gathered around that guy on the floor, already hogtied, already hogtied, this is the, the, the psychological observance of the police officers, how they talk to one another about their subject, about their victim. You know, you didn't see... If, if, if that same situation, let's say... Um, in Spain or Argentina or uh, maybe Italy or I don't know. I just don't know enough of the world to be able to give good examples here. But if the same situation would have happened where the guy ended up hogtied on the floor and the police, the emotions you would have registered in the police around that guy would have said something very different. It would have said something like, Oh God, I can't believe we did this. You know, God, this is terrible. Uh, you know, I don't know, loosen it up a little bit. Or or somebody would have said, I can't deal with this. Screw him. You know, he asked for it. It would have created much more convulsion, disagreement, compassion. And yes, perhaps the instance of somebody being even more unjust, more unstable. If you looked at this situation, it was like they were playing a sport in agreement. They were all around this guy. And now, oh yeah, he's still moving, you know, whatever. Oh, did you take care of that? Yeah, I took care of that. You know, oh my God, they do this all the time, okay? So I'm not criticizing the police. I'm saying that observation of their behavior, pasamelo, sí, claro. That observation um, speaks of how their personality, their professional personality has ended up, um, is, 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 is finally manifesting after generations. Did I say that right? What they have finally ended up being like after so many uh, years of believing that the citizenship needs, the people need to be de dealt with a certain way. It's all instructed also. It all comes from our very confrontational, militaristic mentality towards the world, towards dealing and confronting enemies, sort of militaristic government, you know, that feels it's all, you know, war needs to be strong. You know, so in British tradition, we glorify war and we, it's, you know, some countries really don't have that at all. <laughs> some countries do not think of their, uh, you know, they have ritual and they celebrate whatever, they celebrate when they beat the Paraguayans, whatever, but 
you know, it's not it's not part of their government being a strong power before the enemies in the world. It has been part of our nation's cultural person as so cultural governmental personality since our since the start. And therefore eventually what that led to is when it was time to deal with tougher problems in society caused some caused by immigration this is destabilization destabilization of a society and immigration always brings uh you know convulsion in a society and people are starting to elbow and and getting upset at things they don't understand and but then on top of that came already, so we were already always kind of grumbly because a constant influx of information, of information, of um, immigration. And then comes the problems with, uh, you know, uh, the, the liber libertarian or liberal, perhaps, um, I, ideas of, of the 60s that brought so much uh, use of drugs, which at first didn't seem like it, you know, but then that brought people who sold it and used weapons to defend their money from other drug dealers. And, and so all of a sudden we had these horrible crime drug related problems. And so how did we go about it? This is always what it's about. How do we go about it? This is the key to everything. How did we develop humanism? Uh, uh, feminism. How did we resolve Christopher Street and Stonewall regarding, you know, guys that wanted to act out homosexually and have gay lifestyle and friends and what have you? How did we deal with this aspect of human, you know, in the case of homosexuality, we turned it into a civil right, like I explained before, based on individualism and rah, 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 and we just shoved to the side any understanding that would be about our social anatomy, psycholo social psychological development, the way parents are raising in society, are treating, we're treating each other, but uh, through raising our, the way we raise our kids. And so all that we got shoved to the side and we made it. So how we do, how we went about dealing with this explosion of the drug war, what is now referred to, it's not like we don't know it. We're talking about this stuff and people are saying it, but some people are not listening. They're not listening that the, the wiser, the more uh, evolutionarily true to the human need of a social form is starting to say, we went, this, we started screwing it up when we started attacking with violence. Uh, this is this drug criminality problem. And um, and uh, we call that the, the war on drugs, right? But it still seems, you know, it is taken as the opposite view. There is no duality in understanding humanity. There is something that is more right on target, and there's something that is older. It's always like that. There's something that's on uh, newer, but is wrong, something that is older but is right there's always a a a, um, a hierarchy that's non-linear that's spatial and therefore there's something that there's always a, a truer direction and that truer direction is always to do with what describes us socially in and how we work socially and so the 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 war on drugs the, the the problem we had then and should have been dealt as a social problem should have been looked at well you know we caused this because we let all this stuff happen and we thought this was all great you know and you know kids are leaving their homes and they're 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 abandoning their parents and they're just going off to find a new life lone ranging in the west and that's great because we are america you know so we we uh we had these ideas that kind of fueled uh all of a sudden people sort of being lost not having a structure of friends and family containment of of, of hometown or anything and and some thrived but others didn't do well because that doesn't configure so well with the, the social form given to us by evolution 
not that everybody should stay at home, but we should uh, and, ne and never leave the house, and never leave their grandparents and what have you. But we should have a priority in understanding what the first uh, structure of, of, of form to the species is. And from that reference, we're able to understand how things happen and why the, the, the drug crisis started happening in the 60s or 70s. Um, before or whatever, um, you know, and had we understood it that way, we'd have never treated it like a war on the citizenship, where police had to act like we would confront a foreign nation that's the enemy. And uh, you know, we we would have had. I mean, so I'm in Italy sometimes. You know, I and I always think because it's my subject, I'm interested in. It. Um, so I'm always kind of looking at that. And I see, um, you know, the police have aspects that are what would happen to anybody because of our human nature as a reaction for having the authority, a gun, a power to apprehend and arrest you if, if, if they have to or want to. And that, because that is a little unnaturalness to the, the, the truer to the truer response or closer to the natural form response would be police officers that don't have the right to arrest you or use a gun, but have some kind of moral uh, authority where they can say, I'll tell you, I, because I'm educated and because I know what I'm talking about, this should not be done. I would advise you, you get rid of that, you know, da, 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 da. Uh, but because all countries pretty much have went, have gone for the ultimate authority in, in, a, in an institution to have power over its citizenship with a gun and what have you. It creates in the human being a natural reaction. And you see it in any police officer. There's a certain uh, arrogance and then there's some that say, forgive me for being arrogant kind of thing. But you know, there's all in all, it's 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 sort of a, I'm I I need to feel better than thou in order to compensate that which I don't really want in my hands is kind of the brief explanation for what's happening in the psychology of, of that human individual. Um, and yet, when you see in a country like Italy how they ultimately interact, where they are the people that live in the same town with you. There are, there, there are a couple of guys here that I didn't know were police officers. And I will say, hi, hi, ciao, ciao. And maybe I would have started saying something, you know, <laughs> God knows what. And, um, you know, and that reflects a lot of how, you know, for example, when they're doing their job, I don't know, there are some similarities. But ultimately, if they have to operate collectively, there is a difference. There is a big difference um, when it comes to how the person, the subject that is being apprehended, ultimately gets uh, treated at the human scale. Ultimately, even if the police officers act like uh, something that looks very similar to another group, uh, um, apprehension of an individual after the apprehension is done you see the release after the apprehension is com is concluded uh, by the group of officers you see a very very contrasting uh, post scenarios regarding that individual uh, the Italian officer officers relax uh, they probably didn't use so much muscle, so much force, so much adamacy, so much anger in doing so in the first place. But once the, the person is being taken to the station, you know, they're totally, um, they don't feel so proud. It's a little hard to describe, but it is interesting to notice these things because through them, you see what has affected them. And so, for example, I'm sure that if you go to a country in Scandinavia, for example, where 
uh, I'm imagining one of some Scandinavian country where the police has not that much authority and they do not go around with guns, how they are about um, after they deal with a citizen and, and during the moment that they're processing that citizen, the way they are among each other also. You know, when you look at American police officers, it looks like they're they're the cowboys. They're proud and they're patting each other in the back and you know we got another one down. It all affects society because when you're a citizen growing up in America and you see how your own your own pack <laughs> is being treated by the wolf, you will develop ideas that have to do uh, with how you regard government, how you regard the law, how much are you willing to respect and how much so you know social how much social solidarity um you know doing for your country is there in the states these days i'm sure that as police violence grew uh in, in the last few decades also did this sort of screw you I, why should i do anything for you kind of attitude on behalf of citizens Unless they are, uh, you know, because America has become very split, unless they have, they are like a right-wing mentality or conservatives that just believe that is what police have to be like towards their own people. And they are the ones that when police officers are sloppy, a kid that doesn't have any training or ends up shooting a person begging to not be killed and they they lose it, they become hysterical and they end up, pulling the trigger and killing that person anyways, those are the people that will say, well, you know, he had to do it, blah, blah, blah. So it's also a little difficult to, um, to describe all these things. Um, but you know what? It always comes down to the gun because the gun has an effect on human psychology. If you have, uh, and I'm going to end this now because it's becoming too long, and I'm finally awake, I'm definitely not going back to bed. Um, if you bring a, a, a group of people, strangers, into a gym, um, let's say it's a retreat or it's just some kind of activity, you know, um, and you bring 40, 50 people and say, well, we're all going to spend in, into a, a campus, okay, uh, without anything there's nothing there's no kitchen there's a there's some wash sinks and a place where you can prepare food but basically it's like a, a retreat campus or something and people are going to spend the weekend there and nobody knows each other and they all just come clean you know with nothing with their children you know but uh without any uh, awaiting any infrastructure awaiting for them in any shape or form so they have to do everything they have to organize themselves, they have to organize what activities they're going to do during the weekend, who, how they're going to cook, how everything's going to get done, and, and they will discover things that they wanted to do that they didn't want, and so forth. Uh, didn't know before, and so forth. Um, and you imagine this situation, and imagine that uh, they're all, I don't know, getting ready to see to after eating or something, and they're all making their little groups and thinking up activities that they can do in the afternoon. And then all of a sudden, somebody, you know, you, you hear a commotion and you, you, what's going on over there? Why are people talking? Why are people gathering? Oh, why are those people walking away and going in the opposite direction? And then somebody finally says to you, no, it looks like somebody brought a gun to, to, the, to the retreat campus. This is an example that shows us the natural psychological reaction to the social human collective. Guns do have an, a social effect on people. They do have a natural reaction because it is invented and created to kill another one of you. <laughs> That's the whole reason, especially now, before maybe you could argue this is for animals, but now you look at a gun and what you think this is to kill another human being. So if somebody pulls out a gun at this retreat, uh, even if it's to kill animals, even we're talking even a hundred years ago, if somebody pulls out a rifle, people go, oh, I know that can kill a person too. There are dynamics. It's not just about how some people react and some people don't react. It's about 
a whole bunch of stuff that's going to happen to that group. And all of a sudden, you're going to have where parents were saying, you know, oh, you know, they are parents too. I don't have to worry. My kids can go play over there because those guys are parents also. And they can relax, you know, all of a sudden all that's going to be blown to bits. And are they close to the one that brought the gun, you know, and, and now, you know, who can they be close to and who not? And then they're gonna, you're gonna have people who want to be close to the guy that has the gun, and you're gonna be, you're gonna have people who kind of intuitively feel this is all wrong. This person should not have done that. They want to, they want to go the other way. And other groups that are about not dealing with that situation where the guy with the gun is, will form. While other people will start talking about maybe you know we should have guns too. Why should he have a gun? So it's gonna screw up everything. This is a metaphor to explain to those that say the gun is irrelevant, it's a right, or what have you. It has nothing to do with war or why people kill each other. Wrong. Uh, you know, the, that the human being can be confrontational, aggressive, will even lunge his body ultimately by frustration or frustration that he's not being understood, that he can't have his way, or or that what have you, may even throw a punch, describes a, 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 a not a percentage, but a, yeah, a quantity factor uh, in a population of a thousand every uh, year you will hear of uh, two or th five or ten or have people who went all the way as far as killing another through with their fists, you know, or strangling a strangulation maybe once every ten years, let's say, because somebody, a, a man completely could not, who lost it and thought his wife was driving him crazy and making him jealous at the same time and what have you, and that happened very rarely introduce the gun. When you put the gun into society, what happens? Well, maybe their strangulations are about the same amount. And also you have another sudden three or four killings that are caused by the ease of that person transferring their frustration onto grabbing a gun and shooting, as opposed to going through the emotional struggle and resistance against their own uh, their own conscience of uh, strangling or punching, you know, uh, where before maybe uh, 10 people would have punched another guy, um, or girl, <laughs> just trying to be, trying to be, right? <laughs> what you're all expecting now, okay. Um, Two of those, instead of being a punches, would have resulted in somebody picking a gun, a gun and threatening. One of those would have blown, uh, pressed the trigger. So my point is, in the end result, the gun results in more people dying at the hands of other people in a society than if the gun did not exist. And that is because it has a sociological, psychological impact on the human beings collective. Because everything is understood through starting by the uh, dynamics of the collective. It's not about what this individual will do and what that individual will do. It's about what starts happening because with time, it becomes more permissive and all of a sudden you have duels in the far west where it's totally legit, you know, if I, I, I challenge you, you can bring your gun. And, and so it becomes part of um, the society, but it's because of the gun, not because of the person. What is because of the gun is the greater number of killing, of incidents, not the not that man will be aggressive or violent or not be aggressive or violent, but the result in society of a greater number of people afflicting afflicted by its harm. 
So this is the point I always try to make with people that I have this argument with. The same thing applies to war. If you have a world where everybody has super strong militaries without nuclear bombs, you know, that's the deterrent thing that's right now holding things in a weird, interesting place. But let's say a hundred years ago when nobody had nuclear weapons, I'm not saying this is a good thing because nuclear weapons is creating a, in an, a horrible situation of injustice, but I wasn't of, of, of a political economic injustice among nations, but uh, that's not what I wanted to talk about. But I felt I needed to add that <laughs> since I brought it up. Anyways, let's go back a hundred years ago. Um, you know, everybody had strong armies, prepared soldiers, you know, it's constantly, whatever, going at it, less than now, even though there's nuclear weapons, go figure, but um, still, they were. Had there been no guns, no weapons, no rifles, no grenades, no tanks, yeah, maybe, you know, like monkeys, we would have said, hey, we want to have that valley back, and a whole bunch of people would have organized and say, we're going to kick down your houses if you don't let us have this valley back. Okay, so we have that simian ape part of us, a human being, collective, yes, collective also, that would have expressed instances of violence, of aggression. But it would not have been thousands and hundreds of thousands of people dying every year in the same population, that in the same population, a world without military and army. So the, 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 the villain here is the instrument. <laughs> what a surprise, a human invention. A human invention that does not at all go harmonize, I mean, goes with uh, or harmonizes with um, the natural dynamics of the collective base, the fundamental uh, first uh, description of the species of the human being has already social dynamics that include instances of confrontation because of its nature and violence even, hostility, but um, it has ways that have come, have gotten a lot better, I'm, I'm guessing, because I wasn't there 10,000 years ago or whenever, have gotten better since our, we have the, the, the now acquired capacity to speak. And since we are able to speak, and it's an interesting thing I never thought about, have we become less or more violent, less or more violent since we're able to write and speak and communicate with one another. But in any case, we are that, we are this now. Since we're able to speak, um, we have a, a, a means that is preferable to evolution because even though animals attack each other, every single, every single living form's prime directive, prime objective is to proliferate and grow in numbers. It's like clouds busting up against each other. Every single living form wants to grow. If we could have a bigger, a bigger planet, more the merrier. You know, we have this idea and, and some schools of thought that violence is a way of balancing out the population and, and you know, and we have to justify our aggression and uh, it's not like that. Evolution, evolution and life uh, creation on planets, let's just call it that way right now, has the, the scope of, of going somewhere. It's, it's obviously wanting to go towards conscious intelligence, what we know as conscious intelligence. Uh, we can see it. We can see how animals are becoming more intelligent with evolution. And now there's this one that's on the planet, which is us. And so there's, it seems to be that is the direction of uh, the appearance of life on worlds, you know, and, and, and that is wonderful because, well, it's kind of self-explanatory. Um, what are we doing with our intelligence? We are understanding our our own origin. What and you know, one intelligent one animal will not even know why it rains. Now, a more intelligent animal kind of understands that the clouds are where the rain comes, and so you know, if it sees clouds, it starts going back towards the shelter. We're going like, oh, 
I want, that planet could probably start, you know, producing life. So we are going, our intelligence is going towards understanding its own creator. The world, the chemistry, the forces, the physics, the stars, how it, you know, and where, it, where else it could be thus, therefore, you know. So that makes sense. Evolutionary is, is evolution is spearheading with, uh, with a, a consciousness of, uh, that looks at itself because that way it knows where it wants to go, right? So it's kind of, it's kind of like doing this. Uh, we have never seen it that way. We have always believed that aggression and hostility is just something that needs to be there. It's like the evil, you know, God against devil, and that it's there to balance things out. And it's actually not quite like that. It's evil is a result of something getting in the way of what is not supposed to be uh, obstructed, which is life. And so life, love gets frustrated because you know, how, how dare you not love and not want to also proliferate and go forward and, and get out of my way, you know? And so the frustration and it's a, it's a, there's a different explanation for what the devil actually is. But um, it's tiny and it's a little angry thing that is because love, no, love and life and proliferation and evolution knows no, knows nothing getting in its way. It just... Poof, explodes every life form so this i was explaining that um oh yeah because uh social social beings social forms life forms have dynamics that organize it if you if you leave a bunch of people i'm going to give another example if you live uh if you leave a bunch of people on a beach um on a deserted island like some of these reality shows do right what you see is that we naturally don't want to fight. Fights occur, but because of things that get in the way of what comes before that, which is having a tendency to organize ourselves somehow, organize ourselves socially. So we'll find the ways of, of uh, you know, of, of basically not imposing rules, uh, We'll find a way that don't include imposing rules. Rules. We'll find a way of just knowing how things are done. You know, when those people go for, uh, go, you know, uh, uh, look for water or food, and when it's our turn, we kind of saw that they left us that space in the morning, and we adapt to that. You know, people who who's, who've done a little bit of this camping or hippying out on islands know that. Know that they're. We don't immediately want to impose rules. Now, people do immediately seem to want to impose rules because they come from a civilization that believes in that. And the imposition of rules occurs because people don't use their speaking well enough, being that it's our latest, <laughs> our latest production in evolution, speech, it's kind of like ugh, challenged, right? It has to deal with a stronger human nature that that created it, that put it forth for itself. Again, the relationship of individual with collective, the collective, uh, the sort of the the more the more basic nature of human being seems to take the place of the the matter of this analogy in in collective serving itself of the individual in order to advance and, and spearhead. The same way language is kind of like the the uh, best way uh, to um, to resolve things that are conflictual in, in, to the instinct or to what we have become accustomed to. And uh, but we get frustrated with it because it's also very limited. Language can only do a, a train of words one after the other, of a linear description of. Uh, a, a spatial three-dimensional existence which is human existence so it can never cover everything and so it always leaves a whole bunch out of the full equation of existence um and so you know it's limited eventually we become frustrated now we have this intelligence capacity and we if we realize that uh, language is very limited in, in, in doing justice to the thriving wholeness of the collective in a three-dimensional 
existence, spatial, spatial existence, we can take that realization and say, well, nature has served itself of, of the leader, right? Of the, the president, the king, the, the, the clan leader, what have you. But we have seen how that has always created injustice and disproportion because we're already starting to have higher senses of what we want. We can design a system that is uh, that attempts to achieve that higher thing that we want. And it would definitely not be a, a pyramid of like one leader and five leaders below them. and Or would it? Perhaps if the instrument was that and not the people were that, perhaps it could be interesting because what we would have is circles of people deciding instead of one person deciding on things that push forward other circles of people. And so it becomes a more collectivized thing. I don't know how, why I went in that direction, but oh yeah, the beach. So what happens? Um, this is just the beach example. The, 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 the analogy is basically just to have people understand, remind us, we are already capable of uh, just knowing how to organize ourselves socially because we know the things that are important as a species and therefore each one of our individuals. Um, and this is an important principle because we forget it. We feel that we have to order and boss and mandate and tell people what to do and control them by with force and everything that our civilization has built until now has done that um if we were to just remove that of course being that we're used to being caged all of a sudden you remove that cage and we will be uh everything we can imagine all the things that might start happening for a long time um but the point is to use the reference of what we are by evolutionary design and capable of doing on our own um, so that we see we understand that reference and see how everything we invent will easily tend to go against nature and thus harm us uh, everything everything so we could, you could say for example a car you know, perhaps the most innocuous of, of an example I could think of. But uh, as if we had had that notion of the guiding reference, the, the, the perfect evolutionary design of the human species, and we invented the car, we would have said, well, wait, what's that going to do to our legs and our health? And, and we're not going to be walking and moving around all the time anymore. Am I still hearing? I'm hoping my, my tinnitus will go away. Um, you know, we would have been that much wiser back then. And we would have said, well, wait, let's, what do we do about this? We want to move fast. We want to be able to get there quickly. We, want, we don't want to use up all our time caravanning across the desert. But at the same time, we know it's going to do this to us. So the solution would have been something that is the reasoning of what we know cannot be left behind, must always be remembered, must be referenced, and yet we want to achieve some things. We would have invented things that were the result of that. We would not have probably have massive freeways that take up all our time just driving to work and forgetting our friends, forgetting our family because we're too busy driving and working. And, and so we send them to places and anyways, um, you know, like that, everything basically it's, it's a, it's a noble concept, but in, in a, you know, and not immediately applicable, but it is immediately important and in understanding how off we are in some things and why and where to start immediately correcting that those which problems to start immediately correcting being the ones that are the furthest and most harm are doing to the integral health of the society of the collective 
um, and, and, and immediately become preoccupied, not uh, preoccupied with uh, how to change, what things to start changing, instead of uh, these things being a battle of how to administer straight them or a battle on how to view them, we would immediately know, well, this is like the biggest offender to the collective species. So we've got to do something about it, not argue about whether it's right or wrong or, or how to control it or how to contain it. We know it is the problem. <laughs> so it would change the, uh, the configuration or the, the way we look at, uh, um, healing and running the country in the immediate sense. We wouldn't transform anything immediately. Some things maybe would be easy, but uh, some things that we would talk about uh, with these uh, principles, we would see, oh my God, we would have to change so much to be able to achieve that. You know, and that's just how it is. But some things, on the other hand, would no longer be ignored. And we would see just how off we are. So that's the value of it. Okay, I guess that's where this ends. Um, I didn't get any sleep. I feel like I'm in college. But I'm going through a lot of anyways, health issues. Health. It's all about healing. It really is about recon recon reconstituting as best we can. In, in a direction that is the form evolution gave the collective to start with. Evolution and life creation on worlds and on our planet starts plurally. It start, the, the evolution and, and the appearance of life does not start with a, a prototype and then that prototype will make a collective. No, it, it instantly makes many. <laughs> it, only, it only knows the form of manyness <laughs> for life forms. I don't know how best to say that. Um, therefore, it stands to reason that anything we were to understand about humanity, we do about animals. We don't seem to have a problem in being much more natural in our analysis of the animal kingdom and nature. But when it comes to us, we feel that we just break it apart and it's the individual, you know, and, and then... Who deserves? Who doesn't deserve? Who are the bad ones? Who are the good ones? Uh, and we don't realize that there is no division. There is no separation. Uh, we uh, To understand us socially as a species, our psychology, our sociology, our history, it's uh, the human species. Every single uh, reasoning line or line of analysis and logic starts with we, <laughs> not with that person or that person. So individualism se separates, just like we with homosexuality has ended up separating people. Uh, the 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 ideologic the ideology of social homos recent the modern ideology of, of of social homosexuality has succeeded in separating people in the name of accepting it in the name of saying we're good we're not going to kill anybody anymore we're not going to throw them off the cliff or kick them out of the family or or think of them as less and okay all that is great we always needed to do that but we don't need to separate people to achieve that we need to understand and that's where the difficulty is how sexual uh, homosexuality develops in a society and in individuals uh, of a society uh, because it could happen to anybody given the same or cir similar circumstances to lesser or greater degrees or perhaps not at all, but it could happen to anybody in this sense. Um, and so that's where the difficulty comes because you then have to say, you then have to be very strong about saying, this happened to that person, that person is completely innocent. He should be able to not be discriminated, not be thrown off a cliff, not, you know, be shunned by society, da, 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 da. Uh, nothing to do with being able to marry and adopt kids. That's, that came because of the requirement of the civil category that made us think we need to continue achieving symmetrical artificial equality. But uh, going back a few steps, um, recognizing that that person didn't do anything does not deserve in any way to be mistreated because he 
his body naturally, his development reacted to something that was done to him or to her. By the way, society taught him, parents taught its parents to treat him or what have you, and ended up that happening because of the that nature of human beings. That we need a certain quality of upbringing of life and treatment and way of being raised by our parents and treated by our peers and 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 so forth and that didn't happen a certain way in this society for this reason and that society for that reason this other society for that other reason and so uh, you know instances of homosexuality grow in this society grow somewhat in that society and grow in this other way in that other society Therefore, uh, that's the difficult part because it takes us to say, look at ourselves and say, well, oops, you know, we're not believing the, uh, the right principles in treating and raising our kids uh, or some people are, you know, it, it, it's about accountability. And so human beings always want to avoid accountability, right? <laughs> so that's basically why America has has turned it into, uh, you know, has demoted, uh, has de-evolved de, 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 de de, de it, devolved it, devolved it to, um, to a, a civil category because you can deal with the problems, the, the, which are natural, by the way. And then this, this would be, this would become a dissertation on homosexuality. I, mean, I didn't want to do that. But, uh, Inherently, homosexuality can be the behavior, social behavior of somebody, homosexual, homosexual, uh, developed homosexuality, can be accepted, can be understood, can be uh, saying, hey, we know why this happened to you, you know, we love you, whatever, you know, hey, you know, don't feel shy about this, feel more confident about that, you know, you no, no rush, you know, you're fine, you know, whatever, take your time, you know. That uh, could have, uh, is part of it too, natural part of it, but of, of, of the, our human psychology, psychological reaction towards homosexuality, but also with it comes a naturally wired aversion, which makes all the sense in the world. Because, you know, evolution has one idea, very precise. And so if something else, so the inversion happens, there will be forces that start, you know, rejection, aversion, fear, and all the other more uh, hostile and violent reactions. They all come from, because we want to be a better society, we learn to get rid of the hostile, ignorant, ignorant, not understanding of human homosexuality, uh, violent and so forth part. And we can give... A, 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 not the right to express, but an understanding of also from uh, from the reaction to homosexuality, there is something that will happen, which is, uh, I don't know about that. I don't know. I certainly don't want my, my little boy growing up to do that. That is okay. That is what nature, and it's like saying, I, I forgive you for having stolen from your grandmother, you know, oh my God, it's not the end of the world. I've done it too. Whatever. I don't love you any less. You can still be, to be, you're everything, you're entitled to everything anybody in a society has, you know, so you may, you screwed up, whatever. We accept that person and, um, for stealing from their grandmother, but, um, we can still understand that it's also okay to feel a little judgment, not judgmental. In fact, that's what it shouldn't be. Uh, we to not accept or to want to say something about that, or maybe help that person see their own flawed ways of regarding his grandmother. Uh, you know, all that is also good. It's natural. And, and, and all the better and more power to us if we can embrace and forgive that person and see that we could have done the same thing. Homosexuality is the same thing. It's okay. You know, allow countries to be uncomfortable with it because that's the world they come from in, a, in an exaggerated, over-the-top over the way of being punishing and violent 
we know where it comes from. It comes from that half that, that has discomfort. Perhaps we could show them, instead of saying, no, be, uh, you know, put gays on a pedestal and, and don't be a bad, ignorant society because you don't accept homosexualities, tell them, you know, additionally to your aversion, there's also a part of you that loves your, your brothers and sisters and know that this is something that happens for reasons. Okay, that's what we should have done <laughs> with countries like Uganda and Russia and what have you, Iran, regarding, you know. Instead, we, because we had turned it into a civil thing and, uh, you know, we attacked these countries politically and we also want to always uh, beat them uh, in every single, whatever, arrogantly not, not yield to whatever they're telling us we're doing wrong, you know, whatever the problems are. But um, we could have gone about homosexuality with a, uh, um, a, a different way that would be enlightening and um, expansive. Because what we have done is we constricted us to a division, to a separation that makes us more comfortable, you know. Uh, because we have categories and we know where to walk and, and you know I'm not you are and da 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 and so there's no reason and we have all the explanations for how not to fight and why you shouldn't uh, on civil principles you shouldn't kick your son out of your house or what have you or, uh, but it's more restrictive and separating individualism as opposed to collectivism collectivist uh, intellectuality Individualist intellectuality brings separation and ultimately ignorance because it gives us an easy fix. It gives us a structure to adhere to and become fanatic about. And, and uh, you know, and that fan fanaticism comes from subconsciously knowing that we're denying truths that are no longer allowed to be put into question in order to stay within the format. Um, and it brings ultimately ignorance because we understand less human sexuality, social, social human sexuality, social human sexuality, social homosexuality. We understand less how the, the species is designed to be affected. We become clumsier and less able to know how we're going to be affected by social forces or the forces are in, of our inventions. Uh, it's like the invention, giving a mind to the invention and saying, oh, <laughs> I'm not going against nature. You have to obey me. <laughs> That's what we're doing. We're f putting the invention before the intelligence, the ecological or Gaia or, or organic uh, scientific understanding of uh, natural form design, species and living form design. We're putting the ideology, the instrument, the logic, uh, and so making ourselves thus uh, stupider, dumber about ourselves, and being dumber about ourselves me be means uh, being less prepared and, and understanding what's going to affect us, how and why we're being affected a certain way by something that is harming us. And even will even take us to not notice that we're being harmed anymore because it takes us to, you know, we build conclusive uh, conclusions on beliefs and then we fight. Um, we fight the uh, awareness of the harm. When somebody maybe sees it, and says to us, hey, you know what, but this is ultimately harms us, it's unhealthy in the long run, or in the greater sense of our children, or blah, 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 what have you, or the potential of human beings. We don't hear it anymore. We don't want to, because we become fanaticized in, in, uh, in needing to stay safe. Uh, well, this can go on forever. I hope all of it was useful and you enjoyed it. Daniel, ciao, Dalia. Sto, sto, fin, sto finendo. Spero che, che capisci l'inglese. <ride> Ciao.